This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world, with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, we have a returning guest, and he was back on the show on November the 9th, and at that time, I recommended the stock. It was trading around 20, 21 cents. It's up to now the 24 cents, about 20% gain in 60 days. We're talking no other than Digital Town. They uh, trade on the OTC markets, ticker symbol DGTW, and with us today is the CEO of that company, Rob Monster. Rob, welcome back to the show. Yeah, Everett, great, great to be back. Thanks for having me. You know, before we get into the Q&A, we've got a lot of new listeners through our new platform with NASDAQ and everything. Give them a little bit about statement of who you guys are and, and what you guys do. Yes, yes you, you bet. Uh, so Digital Town is essentially a global smart city platform. We make it easy for any city of any size uh, to become a smart city leveraging cloud-based technology and blockchain. In simple terms, you can imagine a scenario where a city becomes its own Google and its own Expedia, Amazon, OpenTable, Airbnb, PayPal, and Bitcoin, all in one and all branded in the identity of the city on web and mobile, and that is Digital Town. Wow. That's really amazing. You know, recently you completed two more acquisitions since you've been on the show, Congo and City Information. Uh, What do these deals bring to the table and and, and what can we expect from them? Yeah, those those two deals follow the pattern uh, of the last couple of years where we've done a total of seven acquisitions, um, typically kind of bite-sized acquisitions that bring uh, leadership, technology, and an operating business. In the case of City Information, Based in the Netherlands, uh, we got uh, the leading provider of mobile apps for cities. So they had assembled 1,500 mobile app handles on iOS and Android that mapped to cities and had launched 800 of them, uh, generating uh, more than 3 million downloads uh, of their mobile app across the 800 cities where they had deployed it. And so we pick up where they left off, uh, adding a lot of our development capacity in order to be able to give not only every city a mobile app, but to give every city the ability to have a mobile app branded in the identity of the city using the exact exact mobile app handle that maps to their city name. A lot of people don't know that only one uh, app name can be called Amsterdam or London. Well, this is the company that acquired the rights to those various app handles. So we feel good about that, uh, increases our development capacity, but also our sales and marketing capacity in Western Europe um, based in the Benelux, uh, which is a great market for us. Uh, We're making progress in Luxembourg and Belgium and the Netherlands. So a well-timed acquisition for us. Um, Congo, uh, based in Austin, Texas, uh, they uh, were developing over the course of the last three years a platform for legal service provider discovery. So if you're familiar with Avo, that was just acquired by Internet Brands, uh, they were building a platform like that, but multi-category, so that it would work not only for legal services, but also uh, other categories. And so we've just relaunched that product um, after completing the acquisition in the fourth quarter. It's been branded as got.law, G-O-T dot L-A-W, And we own about um, 3,000 of the city.law domains that map to the largest population centers of the world. And we are partnering with local trade associations, notably the bar associations, to equip them to compete and win in the digital age and come together as marketing cooperatives that bypass the Google uh, Apple stranglehold that has been sucking the lifeblood out of a lot of law firms paying very onerous uh, customer acquisition fees. You know, since you guys have moved into Austin City, you guys have created a, a sort of a, a phenom there. Uh, can you give us a little bit more of update of how surprising well that, that your platforms are working there? Well, yeah, that's great. Uh, so Austin is a, is a great town. Um, it is home of South by Southwest, which uh, kicks off in the second week of March. Um, they uh, are also the host city for the team that I just mentioned, the acquisition of Congo, uh, gave us a team in Austin. And so when we uh, brought Austin.city online uh, a few weeks ago and then announced it uh, two weeks ago, uh, the local media was quick to pick it up. Uh, the uh, NBC News affiliate ran it uh, at the 10 o'clock news with a three-minute segment. 
and we immediately registered thousands and thousands of users. And, and, and most exciting, I think, is the rollout of, of, of the city shares, uh, the, which was the, the result of that particular initiative, where members of the community are actually able to claim and buy uh, share interests uh, in the city platform. So Austin.city uh, is the first of many. We own about 20,000 of the .city names and are rolling out this platform one city at a time using this combination of web presence, mobile presence, and partnering with local stakeholders, the municipality, the trade associations, chamber of commerce, and uh, motivated citizens who would like to see a remedy and an antidote uh, to the winner-take-all digital commerce uh, future that they're being told to look forward to. Very well said. My guest today is Digital Town. They trade on the OTC markets, ticker symbol DGTW. And with us today is the CEO of that company, Rob Monster. Since the last time we spoke, you guys have been placing a lot of emphasis on blockchain. What is going on there and why the emphasis on that? Well, blockchain uh, is more than a fad and, and sexy trend that is catching a lot of people's eyes. It's a very fundamental uh, technology for decentralization. Uh, and, and really what we're focused on is exactly that. Uh, in our particular application, our first use case for using blockchain is using blockchain as a framework for shared ownership. So we, instead of having um, a, a centrally owned a monolith branded in the identity of Austin.city or Nashville.city or Pensacola.city or Smart.Miami and Smart.London, uh, we have the ability to partner with the stakeholders in the community, in individuals or institutions, to allow them to be shared owners of that platform using an Ethereum smart contract as the organizing framework to provide fully transparent disclosure as to who owns what share of what including the ability to allow uh, members of the cooperative to buy and sell their shared interest in this platform. So we see it as both a way to align incentives to create a reason why someone would change their behavior, searching on Austin.city instead of searching at Google, uh, but it also uh, creates a sort of crowdfunding economy where it becomes possible for a community to come together to fund more than just the platform, but potentially entire projects. Let's say a city would like to introduce uh, bike sharing in a small scale. Well, they would be able to do that using a platform like this where the actual co-op could do more than operate a web platform and a mobile platform, but could actually use it to crowdfund a project like uh, introducing something that is going to improve the quality of life for citizens while allowing it to become accessible through uh, the digital uh, portal. So think of the mobile app and the web app as your single sign-on for the city, but also for the world, serving as kind of your key to the city. Every citizen gets a smart wallet, uh, every merchant gets a smart storefront, and every city gets a smart web for the purposes of allowing you to search local, connect local, share local, and shop local. And that's a really big idea, and it's one that deserves to be shared with the stakeholders who have a vested interest in its continued uh, access, but also in its continued fair and equitable treatment of all stakeholders. And I'll contrast that with the Ubers of the world uh, that have become you know, lopsided platform economies that are favoring um, the owner as opposed to favoring the other stakeholders, drivers and passengers. And so when you design it as a co-op, you have a built-in safeguard against market abuses uh, from profit-maximizing companies. So our objective is to create a platform that has the scale uh, of an Uber and an Airbnb, but doesn't have the capital intensity because we're partnering with local stakeholders to make it a phenomena. You know, it brings me to my next question about uh, revenues. 2018, you definitely have a lot of news there lately in Austin. How's that going to impact your balance sheet uh, for 2018 for the first and second quarter? We might be able to give us a little uh, interlude to that. Um, so, um, you know, forward-looking statement uh, notwithstanding, uh, I will say that we have three buckets of revenue that we primarily rely upon. Number one uh, is city licensing, including the ability to license the platform to the community through city shares. Number two, uh, transaction revenue from people making transactions across retail services, dining, lodging, as well as peer-to-peer -peer payments uh, with uh, smart wallets. And then third, the outright sale 
of uh, domain names. We have about 140,000 uh, domain names that we own, wow. like all of the dot city domains, the dot law domains, dot fashion, dot work, dot wedding, um, uh, dot shop, and many more. Uh, that have been acquired through special partnerships with the various registry operators, as well as um, uh, city-specific ones like uh, .miami, .boston, and .london. Um, so really, the uh, diversity of revenue uh, gives us the ability to kind of write out the ebbs and flows. But if I look at the specific example of Austin, I will tell you um, a matter of, of public disclosure, uh, which is that in the first three days of Austin.city going live, uh, the, that portal generated more than $24,000 of uh, city share sales just for the city of Austin. Um, and, and that, of course, serves as a scalable crowdfunding mechanism that can be used in every city, and we have quite a large portfolio. So while I'm hesitant to provide uh, projections, uh, at that type of run rate, uh, the company is cash flow break even on a single city basis. Uh, so you can do the math on the economics of what it looks like as we scale that out to many cities. But we feel pretty positive about that particular point of validation, and we're about to go launch in a neighboring city, uh, San Antonio, uh, and a number of cities in, in Belgium that are approaching us about uh, introducing digital towns. So these things have a pattern of becoming phenomena in their own right and then propagating out both locally and globally as people um, catch wind of, of how compelling this idea is that uh, communities can come together and search local, connect local, share local, and shop local. So I would say that uh, the revenue trajectory uh, is up and to the right, um, and, and how quickly it becomes uh, an internationally recognized phenomena, I think will be largely a function of uh, media coverage. Um, so we're highly attentive now uh, to replicating the Austin model and also engaging uh, national and international business press that I think uh, will be keen to follow the story. Rob, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to have you on here. In closing, is there anything that we didn't get a chance to touch upon that you would like to get out there to the listeners? Yeah, um, uh, just a short comment on on working capital. Uh, The company has uh, been blessed with a group of high net worth individuals that are uh, on the board of directors. Uh, I've had the privilege of working with a highly functional uh, board of director and advisory board and uh, you know we've been able to raise the capital that we need as we need it um, but as we look ahead uh, we will in, the, in this current quarter we project to close a significant institutional capital injection in order to accelerate the progress in parallel to uh, ex- executing on the operating story so that's a major development that I expect we'll be able to report on this quarter I want my listeners to take a look at digital town in November the 9th the stock was at 20 cents now it's at around 20 24 cents. I think it's extremely undervalued here also. That's my opinion. Take a look at it. They trade on the OTC markets, ticker symbol DGTW. Rob, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you coming on the show. You're always welcome. And uh, hopefully you'll give us another update in about 50 days. That'll be my pleasure, Everett. Thanks so much for having me on the show. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or the station.